Hi guys, welcome to another video. Today we're going to continue on with Tales from the Crypt. I'm going to do episode 5 from season 1. This one's called Lover Come Hack to Me. <laughs> Lover Come Hack. Motherfucking do it all for you. Lover Come Hack. Decent title. <laughs> It's directed by Tom Holland, though, you know, around this time he was top-notch, you know, Child's Play, Fright Night. Later on he did Thinner and uh, Langoliers, <laughs> one of my cheeseball favorites there. But yeah, yeah, so Tom Holland directs this one, you know, so the, throughout the first season he got top-notch directors so far, this one included. It released uh, June 21st, 1989. It's, uh, it's not, it's not the best episode, but it has great atmosphere and I love like the setting, so um, yeah, we'll get into it there. Also, this one was a bit over 28 minutes uh, long, so it's a bit longer than the other ones, I, I think. Uh, anyways, so yeah, a bit over 28 minutes long. Stars Amanda Plummer. I mean, everyone knows her from, uh, what, Pulp Fiction, Needful Things, The Fisher King, you know, uh, plays in tons of stuff. The main guy in this film is, uh, or this uh, episode is Stephen Shellen. He's more of a, a TV actor, but he's playing in many things too, as more of a, a co-star though, you know, throughout his career, but he's decent in this, in this episode, I like him. And um, yeah, so the, the story is, um, Plummer, she plays a uh, Peggy, you know, she's like a real like shy kind of girl, and um, right off the bat, she comes running, you know, like uh, her and uh, Stephen Shellen, he plays Charles, they come out of this like small ceremony, uh, it seems. There's only a few people at their wedding, but they, we find out they just got uh, married. And her aunt, uh, one of the only people there, she's like uh, chasing after her and saying, you're making a mistake. He's only, you know, uh, marrying you for your money and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, so she's really soft-spoken. Uh, uh, Amanda Plummer's character, very shy. And we find out she's a virgin as well. So uh, yeah, so she, and this guy, like, you know, it's like obvious, you know, he's with her for the money. This guy's like... <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. He's like, you know, he's just, he, they definitely don't match, you know, let's put it that way. And he dresses like, uh, yeah, I find like, like Christopher Lambert from <laughs> Highlander. I don't know, man. <laughs> he's got the trench coat look and everything. But anyway, so uh, the aunt uh, makes it evident that she doesn't like him and, you know, they exchange some words, whatever. But um, they drive off, you know, on her honeymoon type of thing. So on her way to her, uh, Honeymoon, this is like um, where the atmosphere really kicks in, you know, uh, they're driving on a dark road, it's a heavy rainy night, um, um, yeah, and uh, they're driving towards wherever they're supposed to go, but there's a big tree uh, trunk in the, the middle of the road, so um, Charles, the guy, stops there, he gets out of the car, he tries to move it, he can't move it, but uh, when he gets back into the car, uh, the key's missing, so he's like, uh, what did you do with the key, you know, she's like, uh, you must have... Uh, you know, taken it and dropped it outside somewhere, you know, he's going, you know, he's like, but he's getting like aggressive and angry with her, you know, so <laughs> I don't know how he was leading up to them getting married, but now it's like, you know, uh, he's just in it for the uh, uh, money and uh, when she uh, looks in the glove compartment for a flashlight and uh, she finds a gun. So she, uh, he asks her, is, you know, is that it yours? You know, she's like, no, I'm scared of guns, you know, so <laughs> He grabs the gun, pockets it, but, you know, we find out that he actually was bringing that gun to, to kill her. You know, he's going to try to set it up and try to inherit her money, you know, because her mom left her uh, tons of money, supposedly, you know, so she has, she's wealthy. So, yeah, he is a, a scumbag in the, the episode, but it's very interesting how it turns plays, you know, like it kind of really switches on him, you know, it's great. So they get to the, the, the yeah, they, they just, they can't go any further. You can't find the keys. So they have to take their luggage and uh, just walk to the nearest place to maybe uh, get a phone or whatnot, you know? So they come across uh, this mansion, a beautiful, beautiful big house. Uh, no one's home, no lights, no power, nothing. Uh, oh, she just finds, ha so happens to find the, the spare key and, uh, you know, it, you know, allows them to get in, get into the house. This guy uh, warms up by the fire real quick. This guy's butt naked, gets a couple ass shots in here. <laughs> and then uh, she's like, really like, you know, it's supposed to be her first time. She's a virgin. So, you know, he's like, come on, I want you, you know? And she's like, no, no, I'm not here. I want to go into bed, you know? But even in the, in the, the, the house, it's got like uh, the wallpapers peeling off. It's got like a good look, you know? Like, uh, like it looks abandoned, but it's well kept too, you know? Like it's strange. So yeah, it's got a nice uh, atmosphere when uh, they're by the fireplace as well. It's got a huge axe too, you know? Like obviously, 
if you're letting yourself into this place, I mean, you would think it's abandoned, but then you get into this place and there's a huge ax on the wall and, uh, and then later to get up to the bedroom and the bedroom's all made up like, you know, beautifully, like, you know, as if it's someone's honeymoon. So I'd be kind of suspicious at the, at this moment, but <laughs> it's strange, man. It's, it's a decent episode, but there's just, uh, there's a bit too much kissing and like, honestly, like 12 minutes of the episode is like uh, love scenes, you know, it's like, okay. But I mean, at least we got decent atmosphere and it's a good setting in that house and everything. I, I really don't mind this episode. It's not... I don't know, out of the first five episodes, maybe it's, um, I don't know, maybe it's the worst one so far, but it's not terrible, you know, you know what I'm saying? So it's like maybe a seven on ten, so it, it just shows you how strong this, uh, the season is and the, how this show started off, you know? But anyways, getting back to the, the episode, they get upstairs, he's lying on the bed, you know, and, uh, he's waiting for her, he's, this guy's naked, yeah, <laughs> like always under the sheets, naked, she goes in the, um, in the, the bathroom to get all like uh, changed in her lingerie and everything but uh you know she's like i love you you know like uh, you know talking to him uh, while she's getting changed and you just see uh, he's like so not interested you know he's really there just to uh you know try to kill her we find out later on you know so when she comes out on her in her lingerie he's like all shocked you know uh, he thinks uh, she looks great whatnot there's a crazy ass five six minute love scene she's screaming Oh my goodness, it's a bit, it's a bit much that scene to tell you the truth, you know, it's really not for kids this show, you know, like I, I used to watch this at such a young age when I, what, six, seven years old, but some of these episodes, man, some nudity, you know, uh, love scenes, uh, a lot of violence, gore, you know, but I mean, I, I just love this show so much, it's so much fun, you know, so yeah, after their love scene and everything, um, he falls asleep and uh, he wakes up, she's not in bed with him. He hears noises outside. He rushes to like the the window, you know. There's some good music too uh, throughout the these these sections and stuff like that. Man, eh. some decent uh, eerie music at some scenes. Yeah, if you watch this episode, you know what I'm talking about. But um, also, like uh, when he looks out the window, he wakes up. He looks out the window. He hears some voices. He sees a girl, you know, as if she's living in the place. Uh, and a guy pulls up, and she's rushing into the, his arms. You can't really make out the faces, um, you know, from the top floor window. So they come into the house. So he's like, what the fuck? You know, he goes down the stairs to get a closer look. And you can't, you can't, you can't. see that it's Peggy, you know, uh, Amanda Plummer. But like, uh, you don't, you can't really tell until like they really reveal that it's, um, it's Amanda Plummer, but it's playing, she's playing her mother, like a dual role. So he's watching but he thinks it's his girlfriend or his wife, you know, like uh, sleeping with her man. And he's like, what? She lied. She's not a virgin. You know what's going on? He's freaking out, you know, but he, he finds out that they're a uh, ghost. So, um, Amanda Plummer was actually playing her, uh, her mother and, uh, they were reenacting the, the murder. Cause they do this like ritual, the mother daughter connection throughout the line here, as we find out. And so the mom of Amanda Plummer, she acts, takes that big axe above the fireplace, chops up her lover or Amanda Plummer's father, you know, because they want one perfect moment. You know, they, they feel like uh, everything's perfect at the beginning, you know, and then the love just get, you know, grows sour and everything, you know, or you lose the passion. So when you get married, you have that honeymoon, you, you make love and um, Amanda Plummer knows she's pregnant right away after <laughs> she tells him. I have a little baby like this in my stomach and sure enough when he's watching the two ghosts her mom is saying the same thing to the, the you know the the guy she's about to axe up you know so yeah it's pretty gory man uh she's full of blood uh, like uh, giving them a kiss and everything you know and he's and he realizes it's like um you know two ghosts because he like tries to stop her from uh, killing him and then he realizes oh my god it's uh you know you're um her mom you know but they don't interact with him he, he's just like uh, i don't know for whatever reason you know they're allowing him to witness this uh, ritual for whatever uh, reason so he heads back at, oh but yeah he wakes up though that's a whole nightmare sequence it was almost like as if it was like implanted in his brain uh, <laughs> uh you know to what's to come because he wakes up and he's like she's like what's wrong you're dreaming you know it's okay <laughs> you think everything's okay and he's like oh my god i had the strangest dream about your parents you know and uh, everything i saw her kill him she's like oh yeah well 
everything that you saw is true. <laughs> He's like, what? She pulls out the axe, you know? But that axe looks too heavy. I wouldn't be nervous, honestly. I don't think she would be able to, <laughs> like, try to hit me with that thing. That thing would, like, maybe... I think she would topple over trying to swing, you know, that axe, honestly. And also, he has the gun, you know, uh, that he brought there. So he has it right beside her in the, on the, the bed there. So he grabs it, he points it at her. And uh, she's, like, explaining, oh, this is just the one perfect moment before, you know... Uh, I kill you and <laughs> whatever, you know? He's like, well, this isn't a perfect moment because I, I only married you for your money. And uh, she's like, um, oh, no, no, you love me. You know, she's just insane, whatever, you know? So <laughs> he goes to actually kill her, you know? He, he, he was going to blow her head off right there, but uh, we find out she, uh, when he was sleeping, she uh, emptied the chamber, so there's no bullets in the gun. So, boom, he reaches for the bullets and she just goes to town on him with that huge axe. It's... <laughs> It's pretty, uh, pretty gruesome, pretty good, uh, decent episode. It's one of the, one of the better ones. I mean, throughout the whole series, there is decent. Just a little too much uh, kissing and love scenes there. But like I said, I love the the atmosphere. The actors are great. It's top notch director, especially around that time. And uh, yeah, after all that's said and done, when she um, kills him, uh, she's like, uh, she sees her aunt. Uh, it's almost like they set this whole thing up with the the, the branch in the road. She actually, uh, you know, took the key out from uh, the car to lead them to that uh, house. And uh, she knew where the spare key was to get them into the, the mansion, you know. So, like, she, she led him there just for that. So, um, when she talks to her aunt, uh, you know, uh, the one that didn't like the guy there, we find out it, it was all set up. And uh, they're walking and talking. And she's like, yeah, I got, I feel I have a little daughter inside of me. She just knows it. And, but, uh, uh, her aunt's like, okay, no more Mando, eh? She's like, no, no, I don't even uh, want any more after after this, you know? I'm I'm okay, I got my baby, I'm okay. But then she's like, but my baby is going to need a man one day. <laughs> yeah. And the aunt's, yeah, one day. So, you know, they're going to keep uh, continuing on the cycle. I mean, it's a pretty decent episode. I enjoyed it. And, um, yeah, I mean, if you don't remember it, go back and check this one out. It's always a good time to... To go back and check out the show uh, regardless of what episode it is but uh, yeah i had fun with this episode and uh anyway so i'll cut it there um let me know what you think until next time thanks for watching take care bye <laughs>